Good tidings, all you lovely individuals of this beautiful planet. We are back. It's Lee God, Mike, Eric, and Mark here again for another preseason power ranking installment going into the LCS, which compared to the LEC probably actually had a bit less in terms of roster moves, even some of the bottom teams not really making any changes, just feeling like they can run it back with fresh eyes and something will change. But that does not mean that the LCS escaped a couple of impactful changes going across the board in a couple of very important organizations alongside the changes for the summer split as you eyeing some of these teams in a different light or maybe finding different value with them compared to the season, the spring split prior. So this is going to be the look at some. Obviously, Mark is talking directly about Immortals in at number eight, one of the most important organizations in the league who actually looking like they didn't make any moves. And before we meme on them too hard, let's be honest. Since we've cut this down to eight teams, even Immortals in this eight spot yet again, there's still some positives to talk about. I know you see our Mayo on the roster again with all these young rookie junglers and developing guys, and you go, why is he still on this squad? But Castle and Mask were both, I think, surprises, better than people were expecting in spring, and even Tactical and Ole were a more than above average bot lane. Look, there's an avenue that you can believe, you can buy in on Immortals on the fact of going, all right, Castle, Mask, both of them jumped in, you know, fresh, a lot of things against them in this spring split, managed to find some bright moments, some good spots, some growth that you can bet on and put some investment into the next season. Now, the question is, heading into this next season, as you've moved into it, well, what is going on in the world? What's happening in the meta and everything else? And where are we shaping up? With all the changes, we're having impactful carry junglers be a big thing going on across the LPL very early in this summer split, which doesn't exactly match up with what you think you're going to get the most value the area where you're going to be able to have him contribute from our mail in the jungle. I think that that is certainly going to be a weak point for this Immortals team, one that will hold them back in, in these early matches in this early ground. And for a team like Immortals, where it is all about this development, it is about finding your right moment, it's hard to get that good foot for first foot forward in this split when you are going to be behind the ball, I think, in the meta when you're talking about the jungle position. Yeah. Armeo was not the win condition in pretty much all of the games in the spring split. It was those solo laners in Castle and Mask. So maybe they can do some more of the heavy lifting in spring. But immediately after Immortals, when you go to the Shopify Rebellion at number seven, already here, I'm feeling like there's stuff to be excited about this team. And they have the potential, even in the seventh spot, to be winning a best of playoff series. And that's because a team that didn't even make playoffs had the first team all pro AD carry coming out of B-Boy in the bot lane who completely shut down all the haters, us included, who said Wild Turtle should have been starting. I don't think there's necessarily too much when you look at as far as the standings that separated where Immortals and where Shopify Rebellion were. But as far as the general feel about the teams and what is going to be possible, you look at Immortals and you kind of go, yes, maybe you find a little bit more progression here or there but it's still not enough that you want to throw them into that category for the playoffs where you feel all of a sudden for Shopify Rebellion, you make a change here, you keep improving and everything goes right this split. You are in that conversation for a playoff spot and a playoff spot, not just, oh, we're locking up that last spot and we're going to get ousted type of situation. A spot where you can do damage. You can find a way to get these wins in a best of series, best of scenario change for Tomio uh, in the jungle is one that we are both excited about that opportunity for him and have talked about that one and you called it out very right very wrong about b-boy and what he was going to be doing in the bottom lane for this team and how fantastic and what type of contributor he was for this Shopify rebellion team they got coming back for another split in that top side and as well you've got your boy insanity in the mid lane i think that he was a bit a bit over the, all over the place for shopify rebellion this past split and i think he can certainly if he gets back to more of a consistent level of play provide that angle in the mid lane to be an x factor for this team yeah insanity is a bit of a mystery because you've heard interviews with him talking about 
he's played all these crazy picks, Graves mid, Zion mid, Zach mid, and he's saying, I don't actually really like playing off meta picks. I'd rather play the meta stuff. And I'm, doesn't look like it, my man. Who's telling you to play Graves mid at that point? But uh, always exciting to see what pick he has going. And Tomio, as you mentioned, obviously he was on the squad in spring, but Boogie got all the starting time. He's already got some built up synergy with fake god back from their time on disguise together but tomio just one example of a young jungler that you would like be starting over somebody like armeo so excited to see him get that starting spot very good very good and this is one of those type of moves that this is that throws you in that conversation for that playoff spot you start to now have to make these equations about these other teams that finished you know a uh, six through four at this point and evaluate them against a Shopify rebellion right now. I think our, our safe bet is them falling into this type of tier, but do not sleep on the chance of a Shopify rebellion moving into a playoff tier. And honestly, I, I was hesitant. I almost put them ahead of a squad like NRG at six because of how abysmal NRG looked at times in spring, but felt like you still had to at least give the respect for the names that are on this roster and Absolutely nobody in their right mind is saying they reached the power level that they should be at pretty much at any point in spring. Uh, I mean, I don't know if anyone thought they could reach as low a power level as they did throughout spring was the question. With NRG, you head into this summer split. We're sticking through with it. They have the faith in these guys and what they're going to be able to do. They made, they think, the right change in spring in the, for the bottom lane, and they're betting on it continuing through in the summer split. The bottom lane wasn't necessarily the big biggest problem that we saw with this energy team. I think you can look up cars to the top side for Big Dokes. Dokla, not a very good split from him individually. He talked to think, I expected to not have a job after a split like that type of thing. Uh, the way that he performed, and you think you can extend that really to Palafox, some questionable performances in the mid lane, scratching your head. You head into this summer split, it's got to be that mental reset for these NRG guys. You got to find a way to just wipe the slate, ignore almost what happened and some of the problems of the spring split, and try to channel that energy channel, the mojo of making it through sp summer last split and making that run at Worlds. That has to be where you're trying to pull some strength of. Otherwise, it's looking like you are getting lapped by a couple of these squads in the LCS. And truthfully, another split to the level of what they got in spring. And you're going to hear people start saying, was that summer and world's run a bit of a fluke? Because now we're seeing back-to-back -back splits or maybe a full year where you're barely on that playoff bubble in the LCS. So if they were playing with a chip on their shoulder when they were defending champions... They're really going to be paying with a huge chip on their shoulder uh, this year coming in. But yeah, with who he uh, slotting into this roster, it didn't work out initially. But you're right. The bot lane was not a huge issue. Expecting a full bounce back from NRG heading in to the summer split. Top five action. The biggest, busiest offseason by far. Four fifths of the starters changed. Our team, Dignitas. And because there's so much change... And because a couple of the guys haven't played in a couple of splits. Hardest team to rank uh, out of these eight by far. I feel like the five spot is a conservative. They could maybe climb as high as top three. Or if some of the players end up actually being washed, they're hanging out with Immortals. And I think at the very least, this tells you everything you need to know about this Dignitas revamping here is slotting in at number five. Because as you laid out, there's a couple things that are the detractors that are the, still the question marks that remain about these players about returning to action about this whole combination of them together with dignitas all sorts of those questions exist and are very valid but then you start to to weigh them against what you know the guarantees about these players and what should be possible for them with this dignitas roster and you slot them in comfortably at number five this is a number five that buys you a playoff spot, that buys you avenues and chances in best of series. And then by then, when we have gotten to that point, you're going to know whether these answers, these question marks that you had before about this Dignitas team, you're going to know those answers. And if they're all coming up roses and thumb, thumbs up, this is a Dignitas that accomplishes their goal of making it to Worlds this year. 
If those question marks come up with some big red X's, this is a Dignitas team that will fail and come up short on that achievement. And listen, we still got to put the respect on four of these guys having LCS titles, championship level, been to international events, and despite playing for so long, a lot of them, they seem more motivated than ever because they're being questioned. They're being second guessed. Oh, are you still good enough to even be a contending LCS team? So this squad definitely has something to prove and it's fitting that they're on the organization that people count out year in and year out. So very excited uh, to see these guys and no question, follow the surge of fandom that Dig is going to have as a squad this year. Oh, the the revenge tour for these guys? You better Ooh. believe you're going to get some fans jumping on that bandwagon. Some serious wagon. trash talk. Jensen's van and speaker. Oh, oh. oh man. Jeez. Licorice versus the rest of the LCS to prove Ooh. he deserved that starting spot. Speaker coming back after getting axed by FlyQuest. Someone else getting axed by FlyQuest. Jensen in the mid lane rolling on through. Ooh, that matchup's going to be nice. And Sven OG Niels back in the bottom lane. Oh, man, this is a whole deal for Dignitas. However this plays out, I'm thrilled that we are getting to see it this summer in the LCS. As hyped as you are about Dig, though, still felt it'd be disrespectful to put them ahead of a squad like 100 Thieves, who's got the reigning MVP. And I know they fizzled out a little bit the hype when the playoffs rolled around, but another one split under Sniper's belt that feels like he's already been playing for a few splits. River was no question one of the premier junglers in the LCS. Still, we're just waiting for a bit higher of a power level from Meech and Ayla in the bot lane to take this team to the next level. A hundred thieves finding the Cinderella glass slipper. Glass split, the way that they were able to slot in and get their performances in play. And unfortunately, the, the carriage turned into a pumpkin a little bit too soon for them at the end of the playoff type of run. And there might be feeling that this not is the spot, that they should be a little bit higher up. They're being a bit disrespected in this type of one, falling at number four. But I think it is this right spot. I think this is still that Cinderella glass slipper for 100 Thieves in this power rankings to throw them in right here. As you laid out, we've got a couple of things that we want to see right away. Number one is that bottom lane. Beach and Ayla continue to develop, continue to progress. We need to find them operating at the highest level. I don't think we got either one of them at their full peak is the big thing that you got to be looking for. And we're waiting for that pop off. And we're not the only ones waiting because the rest of this 100 Thieves roster is waiting for that pop off because if that damage is there. If that fight is there for them with that bottom lane performing, it's going to be an 100 Thieves victory is the way things were going. Things were stable and steady from Quid in the mid lane. Continued progression and stability from him with consistency is a mega win for 100 Thieves. As you laid out, River was fantastic in the jungle. And you go to that top side. What do you want, man? General Sniper, another split. This is crazy. As you said, we already feel like he is a mainstay icon of the LCS already after one split. I can't wait. To, what, to see what he's got for us in summer, in summer, excuse me. And he was the solo kill king in the top side uh, throughout that spring split as a rookie. Sometimes he was getting caught out and dying as well, but you take the aggression for a young player who's coming into his own. And as the meta shifts to more non-Senate type champions in the bot lane, we'll see if Meech and Ayla can step up as a true carry threat for this 100 Thieves roster. Despite an absolutely terrible, god-awful end to the midseason invitational FlyQuest, even with Jensen out, still a top three team. They were so clearly the best team, except for when they matched up against Team Liquid in the playoffs. But pretty much every other time during the split, you were talking about them. I know the Jensen thing leaves a little bit of a sour taste, but Quad dominated the challenger scene. They won the entire title. He was one of the best, if not the best mid laner in the league. So I understand him getting the opportunity. It's just Jensen being done dirty. Yeah. It feels incredibly sour after the abysmal performance that was the MSI from the entirety of this group for FlyQuest is the way you got to be looking at this one. We do remember in that MSI, maybe a tiny twinkling of, of, of good performance and, and understanding that, yes, the bottom lane, the young and experienced bottom lane is picking up this experience exposure at the base level to what was happening at that MSI. Now you go back home to 
the LCS and you gotta regroup and you gotta regroup now as this four adding in quad into the mid lane is going to be the thing. And I think a lot of people will have those question marks. We talk about the question marks, Dignitas, uh, you know, maybe take away only one of them and change them around type of thing. And you still got those question marks for now this FlyQuest team but you weigh it against what we saw from them in the spring. And a lot of that success in that spring, albeit uh, uh, except for against Team Liquid, you did see that from this FlyQuest team. So you have to be betting on seeing more of that. I think it's unfortunate the way things have gone and, and the whole situation with the Jensen thing and whatever. Inspired is an extremely talented player still and one that has been impactful in the LCS. Fwipo. Yes, we've had the what are you doing, but you're not even looking at your own screen type of deaths type of situation. We've also seen that creativity. We've seen the ergot. We've seen the performances that he has built his name internationally upon for this FlyQuest team. I'm, I'm hesitant, but I am betting on the resurgence, on that rebound from MSI because uh, the, the other side of that coin is a very, very dark and unpretty one. And the revisionists are now saying FlyQuest, Whippo Inspired were never good in the LCS this split, but they were the best team in the league for 95% of the split. It just so happened to be the two most important series of the season where they were not the best team. That honor goes to Team Liquid, who actually, wait a sec, they're in the number two spot. I know people might panic here, freak out, because they had an impressive run at MSI. They're obviously the defending champions and as always with these rankings, it's kind of what stakes are you taking from the previous split? Are you resetting entirely and just looking at paper for this roster? No question, you should be excited about the growth and development for Team Liquid, but we're not putting them number one yet, and we'll get to why in a minute. Uh, I, I feel more comfortable with kind of a, a 1B for Team That's Liquid fair. and 1A. They, they're the absolutely, if you're breaking it into S or A tiers, Cloud9 and Team Liquid stand alone in a tier of their own brand. Because I, I certainly don't want to take anything away from MSI for Team Liquid. And this is not, you know, raw MSI was so amazing. Team Liquid is the best team in the world. It's not that. But it was a very solid MSI from this team and certainly one that showcased key improvements and growth for players like APA and Yon, which are the big factors that you watch when you're talking they about They were Team supposed Liquid. to get gapped the most at MSI. And they showed up big time for this team. They made big plays. They showed what they could do. They stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the very best in the world is the way you have to examine this one from Team Liquid. You've got your already guarantees when you talk about impact in the top side and core JJ down in the bottom lane. More or less your guarantees, knockouts of what you got from these two players. Umpty, uh, you know, kind of still a little bit all over the place, but performance-wise was, you know, and down all over the place at MSI. So still got to see enough from him that you want to be believing in what the general umpty can do and be an X factor when things are going right and steady in these team liquid lanes heading into this next split. I'm still looking for more of a champion pool expenditure or mastery for someone like APA in the mid lane. And for Jan, I want to start seeing some of that double lift energy. I want to start seeing some attitude and performance of, you know what? I am the big dog here in the LCS. I am the top ADC after what I just did at MSI. I want to start to see those performances. If we see that from this Team Liquid, they're not going to be a 1B. They're going to be contending for just a singular number one spot. And you saw glimpses of Yon doing that, trash talking FlyQuest a little bit, saying he was tired of listening to Whippo and Inspired talk so much trash, had to put them in their place, and that is exactly what he and TL did in that playoff push. But to keep on, hold on to that top spot, they got to jump over a squad like Cloud9. And I know they just got 3 0 by TL in the playoffs. How can they be ahead of them? Well, of course, there were some pretty substantial Cloud9 changes. First and foremost, Reaper coming in as the head coach, coming back as head coach. This team's going to be much more disciplined. I expect the communication in game to be better, which seemed like it was the biggest issue of the entirety of Spring Split. Combine that with Thanatos coming in because let's be honest, Fudge did not have a good playoff run against FlyQuest or Team Liquid when they were matching up against them. Thanatos 
This guy could immediately be the best top laner in the LCS. We were waiting for him to get that promotion. Wanted to see him starting over King and for D+. So those two big key changes, combine that with it felt like Cloud9 was only ever at like 60, 70% power last spring. I still got faith in this one. These are not even just big changes. These are gargantuan changes for this Cloud9 team and ones that are absolutely no question going to have impactful uh, things happening out there on the rift for this team. Number one, you laid out Reaper coming in as the head coach. Expect the practice, the structure that is going to be there in this organization to be wildly different and held to a strict, consistent standard is going to be one of those ones. So you better believe that the scrims, everything else from that should be much more uh, held to that standard Which, from Reaper. Remember, Berserker was very visibly, audibly upset about that in all the Cloud9 content. Absolutely. So players like Blabber, like Jojo Pyun, certainly tightening the screws Stop on that feeding. situation. <sighs> hey, look, you might you, you might have to bring this up with Reaper, but I'm sure he's going to let you still wear Crocs during scrims. But you're in scrims and you're locked in and you're going to be in that game type of mode for him. And when you're doing that practice, the second thing coming through is Thanatos in that top side. You can look at the four other members outside of that top lane for Cloud9 easily make an argument that they are the best the second best in their position and i would say probably the best i think is that argument very much most of these times for all these players and then you would look at the top lane and you would look at fudge and some of the disappointments that you had had throughout the his run on cloud nine and you weighed against the the domestic dominance because let's be real that is what we saw and come to new new from fudge in that top side we didn't see that this split now you bring in Thanatos, and as you laid out, already screaming to get this guy a starting spot in the LCK. Yeah. Who knew he'd come into our own backyard in the LCS? And now it's it's spring deja vu. We're all hyped for Cloud9 to again be the best team in the LCS. Hopefully this time we're not disappointed, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.